Today, we get started with Ruth chapter 1. We're going to be translating and focusing on nouns. We're going to be focusing on prepositions, adjectives, construct chains. Let's get into this. So as you can see here, we've got a really wide screen with accordance. That's what I use for my Bible software. Now, in the middle, I have my Hebrew text. This is not Ruth 1, so I'm going to set it to Ruth 1. And boom, I've got it synced up. So the NRSV is over here on the left. I've got my Hebrew text in the middle. And over here, I've got all sorts of commentaries. I've got my BDB, Halo. I've got it all here. So uh, for now, we're going to focus on the middle section. And we're going to start translating Ruth chapter 1. So I'm going to do my best to pronounce it. I'm going to butcher it. I apologize. But this is more about reading and recognition, not about being able to pronounce it correctly. Okay, so vai he be me shafot hashof team. Shafot hashof team. That's interesting. So we have our verb. And it was in the time or days of to judge. And this is a participle, the judges. All right. So first off, we have our uh, b preposition in and yom. But this is in the construct form. So not only we have the inseparable preposition, then we have the construct, and then we have our infinitive. So this is something like, and it was in the days of the judges. Uh, this is a participle. So with this infinitive, the judges judging, who were judging. So... Translation so far, and it was in the days of the judges who were judging. And it was Ra'av Ba'aretz Vayelech. Okay, so Ra'av is hunger. I'm going to triple click on this. So this is Halo. This is my preferred one. I prefer this to BDB. Um, Middle Hebrew to allow, starve, but that's in Hifil. No one may apply on the Sabbath. Okay, that's textual emendation. Keep going, keep going. Well, it just looks like to be hungry and they don't have a gloss here for Ruth in specific but here we see suffer famine in Genesis 41 55 this is not the noun this is common masculine singular absolute so it's not Ra'av, the verb. I don't know why it's tagged here. So if you're using these tools, make sure you hold them in suspicion. The tools are not infallible. So it's not the adjective. This is Ra'av with the double comets. So it's actually this entry right here. Ra'av, hunger. Curious to see if Ruth is listed here. I always love it when that happens. Here it's famine. Ruth is not listed here. But because it's tied to Aretz, or Eretz rather, land, I'm going to say it's famine. So that's how I'm going to translate it. And rather than it, I'm going to say there was famine in the land. There was 
you could say a famine in the land. Now we know it's the land because we have our inseparable preposition here, but the vowel is changed and the vowels changed over here on, on Eretz. We see some lengthening. So the definite article is, is present here in the land. And so this is halak to walk, but halak can also mean to live. So a man, okay, from Mebeth Lechem. That sounds familiar, right? Bethlehem. From Bethlehem. A man from Bethlehem, Judah. So this would be in Judah. I think you would have to know that from context because there's no preposition here for in. Also, there's no word here for there. So the English translation, they're really supplying in the NRSV a lot of help here. Not a ton of help, but they are supplying some help. In the land. So this is Cal consecutive, third masculine singular. A man lived, man lived from Bethlehem, Judah. Now, halak here is actually going to be in the sense not of live, but to go. So there's famine in the land and a man from Bethlehem in Judah went la to gur sojourn as an alien. Bas, bas they. So this is Sade field. Ah, Moab, Moab. So he went to sojourn in the field, or plural rather, in the fields of Moab. And now we see who. Remember, who is he and he is she. So who means he. He and his wife and, so this is Vaishto uh, Ushne Banav. So, and then Sof Pasuk and a verse. He and his wife and two sons, his two sons. And there was a famine in the land and a man from Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the fields of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. End of, end of verse. Now, uh, why is Sade, why is it definite? It's because it's a construct to Moab. And since Moab is definite, the construct is definite. All right, so we've got our infinitive here. Good. So we're seeing plenty of prepositions uh, and we've seen some construct chains already. This is good. On to verse two. Vashem Haish Elimelech. So the man's and the man's name was Elimelech. We have to supply to be because it's not present here. So, and the man's name was 
Limelec. What does Limelec mean? Let's see if we can find out. Elimelech. My God is king. There's Ruth. One, two. My God is king. Okay. And the name of his wife. So we'll say in his wife's name. That way we mirror how we translated the other one. Because it's the same kind of structure. And his wife's name was Naomi. What does Naomi mean? Interesting that Halo doesn't provide it. Interesting. What if we look this up in BDB? Huh, it doesn't provide it either. So sometimes we don't get the names translated in our uh, in our lexicons, which I find to be frustrating. There are books on biblical names, so you can you can always look at those instead. But interesting, it's not in there. What what about TDOT? So TDOT is the uh, theological dictionary of the Old Testament. It's huge, and it doesn't list it at all. Okay, so moving on. That's Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Vashem, Shanae ba Banav, and his two sons. And we're going to make name here plural, the names of his two sons. Even though Sh Shem, Shem here is singular, just because of, in English, there's two sons, There's so there's two names. So his two sons' names were Machlon Vachilion. Chilion. Chilion. What do these names mean? Hopefully we can find out. So Machlon, sickly person, <laughs> sickly, Chilion, frail, mortal, so sickly and frail, that's not good, <laughs> they probably shouldn't be traveling, so Ephratha, Mibeth Lechem, Yehuda, they were Ephrathites, from Bethlehem in Judah. So there's no verb. So we're going to supply it again. We're really into a new kind of a um, clause here. So I'm going to use a semicolon in the translation. If for theme, so they were, and this isn't the location Ephratha. Interesting, it's Ephrathi or Ephrathim. But, ah, okay. So, Ephra, Ephra, um, Ephratha is another word for Bethlehem. So, we'll say they were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. Again, there's no preposition for in, but we know Bethlehem is in Judah. And so, when it puts uh, Bethlehem Yehuda. It's like city and state in the United States. So we've got from Bethlehem Judah. Vayavo. Oh, that's an interesting one. Vayavo u. Vayavo u. Remember the olive is a guttural, so it's technically not even pronounced. So we have the vo and then a little bit of a pause. You could say an apostrophe. And then u with the shirk. Vayavu, vayavu, which means this is from bo to come. And so normally this would be 
imperfect. They will come, but because of the consecutive here, that's not, it's the opposite. And they came, or well, they went, and in this case, the verb includes to. They went to, and they went to the field, or fields rather, of Moab. Now we have a verb via via you via you uh va ye ye you via you boy that's that one's fun uh this is haya to be i want to be a martial artist haya uh there shame or sham went uh so they went so that doesn't quite make sense in the, in the translation. Haya here is, is going to function slightly differently. I want to see this in Halo here. Happen, occur, remain, or live. So in this case, remained. You can see Ruth 1 here being in, in black, bold. That should really be in red. I don't know why it's black all of a sudden, but any, in any case... Uh, remain so and now haya here is in the imperfect but again consecutive vav consecutive so the opposite instead of the um, future tense we're going to translate this uh, past tense and they remained there and remaining in this sense means to live to dwell um, although that's i don't think we would translate it dwell but it has that sense and that's the Sof Pasuk. So there's the end of our verse. Moving on, we've, we're at verse 3. Let's scroll down here. Uh, Vayamath Elimelech Ish Naomi Vathishaer Vathishaer He Ushne Banea Baneha. And Elimelech died. This is moth. Geminate verb. And Elimelech. He died. So it. Ish is there as well. So and the man, Elimelech, died. And then we have Naomi. Oh, I see. Ish Naomi, husband of Naomi. And Elimelech died, the husband of Naomi. Ish Naomi. Now, here's an example of where the accents of the Masoretes helps because you can see this little um, sub bracket underneath the olive on the left hand side. It kind of shows that, okay, this is the beginning of this phrase and it concludes with this i think this is called a, a knock um this upside down y showing that these these belong together so that's that's where the accent systems can help you but again treat it with a little bit of suspicion so we have this phrase then this phrase and now we're at vatish sha'er and and it's third feminine singular. Well, it could be masculine singular too, right? Hmm. Well, it makes sense. I think we're talking about Naomi now. But this is Nifil. So remain. This is people who live longer than others to remain. He who is he and he is she. So here we have he, so she remained and she remained Ushne Banea. She remained. So there's no actual verb for Shne Banea, but this is and her 
two sons. And they remained. And she remained. I'm going to translate as did her two sons. End of verse. Verse 4. Vayish u. Ah, it's not a it's not a sheen, it's a scene. Vayis u. So this is nasa to carry, to lift, or take. Lachem. This is not lechem. Um and, and also this is not a, a chet. This is hey. So I pronounced it incorrectly. Lahem. And they took to themselves wives, Moabite wives, and they took for themselves Moabite wives, plural, wives of Moab. So Moabite wives. Name Ha Ahath Haath Haath. So the one named Orpa. So this is a, a comet Hatuf, not a comet, so it's an O. And we know that because it's a closed syllable. And it's not the final syllable. So Orpa and the name of the second. Okay, so this is Achath first, not just one. So Echad. Ruth isn't highlighted in here, but you can see, for example, in the first year, Daniel 9 1. So in this context, so. Moabite wives, the name of the first was Orpah, and the name of the second was Ruth. Orpah, Vashem, Hashanith, Shanith. Ruth and they dwelled there for 10 years. They don't exactly say who's married to who. If order is any indication, then Orpa married Machlon and Ruth married Chilion. So Ruth married Frail. But we don't know that for sure. We're on verse 5. Vayamuthu. Vayamuthu. Gam. Shinech. Shinehem. Machlon. Vachilion. Vachilion. So. Then. Also. They died. That doesn't quite make sense for also. Or Gam. Also, also makes sense because Elimelech already died. Elimelech? No. Why am I saying Elimelech? Yeah, Elimelech. He already died. So now also they died. And also him. Him being third masculine plural. So they, the two sons, they died. And also the two sons is implied, although it's not there. So I'm going to put sons, even though sons isn't there. Also, uh, I don't need to have it in there twice. And also the two sons died. Machlon and Chilion. Vatishaer. Er. 
third feminine singular. Haisha Mishne. The woman remained from the two sons. So we have Yelid here, child. Yelid, Yelade ha, Yelade ha, Umeisha, Umeisha. So this is referring to Naomi. And the woman, this is Sa'ar. Same as we saw before, remained from sons. In this case, from is, is likely to mean, oh, we got a problem. Okay, so sometimes this happens with accordance. I don't know about other Bible software, but I want to see the preposition mean, and I can't see it, so I'm going to type it in. See if we can find it here. Mon, 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 main, mean. There we go. And the only reason why I knew that is because I know my vocabulary. Or at least I know some of it. So, local, point of departure, that's not what we have. Temporal, since, that's not what we have. Designates the material from which something is made. No. Designates the cause. No. Specifies the point of view of the person who is passing judgment. No. Specifies the logical cause. No. Verbs of fearing, hiding, warning, guarding. No. Partitive. Part of the whole. No. After adjective of superlative. No. Uh, mean plus infinitive. No. With other prepositions preceding. No. So interesting. Remained away from. It doesn't seem to be local to me. I think partitive makes sense. Without. Far from. Without. That makes sense. There's no other prepositions preceding, so it's definitely not 10. I'm going to say it's without. With verbs of fearing, hiding, warning, guarding. That's not applicable here, but it makes sense. The woman and the woman remained without the two sons. And Yelid here without her boys and without her husband. So... And the woman, or we could say the wife, remained without her two boys and without her husband. Because and without is identical to what we had prior, I'm just going to say and her husband. End of, end of verse. Now we're on to verse 6. Vatacham. He. Vakalothem. Theha. Vakalotheha. So this is, they got up. Or she got up, rather. She. Then she got up and so this is daughter-in-law or bride from uh, Kala, veiled one. That's what that literally means. <clears throat> and her daughter-in-law, her, da her Kala, but this is plural, daughters-in-law. Her and her. So, and she. We could say a rose. That sounds good. A rose. And her daughters in law. 
and returned shov mish they to returned from she returned from the fields of moab mish they moab again because Moab is definite, then uh, Sade has to be definite as well. Because, we well, could say four, key four. Shamah Bisde Moab. For she, because she heard in. Okay. This is where accordance is a little frustrating, and I wish there was something different we could do about it, but when I triple click this word, it takes the whole lexeme. So I can't search just the preposition, which is annoying. Uh, these words for verse reference were not found in the tool. Okay. Yeah, well, we don't get rid of that. And there, just search for be. There we go. Now we've got among, in, at, within, upon, at, according to, into, through, with, to, when. None of these really sound accurate. She heard in the field of Moab, literally, but more like from among where it could just be simply among so I'm just gonna say among for she heard among the field Is it plural singular this one's singular for some reason the field I wonder if that means this is a different translation saw they pasture open fields land Maybe it's land in this case. Pasture, territory of tribe or of a people. Pasturage, territory, field, arable, land. I'm going to say land. To make it distinct. Land of Moab. That. Pachad. Adonai. Okay, so we don't read Yahweh, we read it Adonai. The vowel pointings are from Adonai, but we retain the tetragrammaton Yod, He, Vav, He. But out of respect for the name or out of respect for Hashem, we don't say Yahweh, we say Adonai. And even still, Yahweh is a guess on how to pronounce it. So, Adonai, Fachad, Adonai, Eth, Amo, Lafeth, Lahem, 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 Lahem. All right, so that the Lord. Number, a point, or punish. Uh, this is Cal, perfect, third, masculine, singular. So it means make careful inspection, look at, see. For the Lord saw his people or review, stipulate, call to account, avenge, afflict. I'm just going to say inspected in the land of Moab that the Lord inspected his people we have our direct object marker here eth and then om people and then o the pronominal suffix ending for his, so his people, given to, he inspected his people, la teth. So this is Nathan to give, 
It's the infinitive, Cal infinitive construct. And we have le, our inseparable preposition. Le teth, to give, to, to give, literally, to them. Notice it's lahem lachem, lahem lachem. Here we have a hey, here we have a chet. Here we have the preposition. Here we have hem, the third uh, plural masculine pronominal suffix ending. Here we have lachem, which is bread. So what's interesting is they came from the house of bread. Beth Lachem. And six verses later, God gives them Lachem. Bread. So he inspected his people in order to give to them bread so that concludes verse six verse seven va tetze yatsa to go out so they left and this is cal uh it's third feminine singular so she left come out come forth go out go outside proceed come forward Set out, move away, go forth. I think that sent, makes more sense. Set out, move away. She went out from Min Hamakom, that place. From Ha, the definite article, but in this case, we're going to translate it that from that place, which, and she went out. From that place, which Haitha Shama to be there. So this is Cal Perfect. She was there. So we're going to tr translate this from where she was, which was where she was. Ushte and the two daughter-in-laws, uh, Kalotheha, Kalotheha, with her. So, and she went up, went out from that place, which, which was where she was and her two daughters in law the other way to say it is where she had been living or where she was living in fact i am going to add that which which was where she was living and her two daughters in law with her so we can rephrase this and she went out from that place which was where she was living we take a while take out and with her two daughters-in-law just to make better english out of it we still have the same sense vatelach vatelach na vatelach na um, so this is halak, cal, consecutive, feminine, plural. So now we, we are switching to the plural. Everything before this has been third feminine singular. So they walked on the way to return. So vaderech lashuv. El Eretz Yehuda. So 
we're gonna say then in at this point then they since it's a turning point no pun, no no pun intended then they walked on the way to return to the land of Judah and of verse. So we have L here and Eretz. This is all a construct chain with Yehuda. So that makes this whole thing definite. This is a construct uh, in, in, as well. L Eretz, but L meaning two here. So verse eight. Va Tomer. So this is Amar to say. And she. So now we're back to the singular. Naomi said to her two daughters in law. And Naomi said to her two daughters in law. I'm going to put a comma and a quotation mark because in English, that's how we mark that someone's speaking. Lechna, go. So this is halak, but it's imperative. And then we have another imperative, shovna. So shov, to return. Isha, levate. Ima, yaase. Here's an example of brackets for textual criticism instead of yaase the other textual variant that warrants consideration is yaas adonai imchem chesed kaasher asithem im hamethim the imadi so Naomi speaking, she says, go return. This doesn't make sense. Return Isha. That would be wife or woman. Levate to house. Ah, okay. So return to interesting so this is not in the second person we have the second person as far as the imperative is is concerned and then we have isha which is a, a straightforward noun then we have the uh, by it noun with the inseparable preposition le to house and then we have Ima, mother, Im, M, her, third feminine singular pronominal suffix. So, in essence, it's go, return, each one to her mother's house that's essentially what's going on there so go return each one to her mother's house or to the house of her mother and then so this is cal imperfect third masculine singular but it's actually jussive so let her do 
there's ya uh, uh, yaas, cal imperfect, third masculine singular, justive to do or to make. So the Lord, let the Lord do with you chesed, gracefully, graciously, as which you have done with Hamathim, the dead husbands is implied, and Imadi, and with me. So may the Lord see, do. This is Cal. Ah, uh, we have treat as a possibility, so I'm gonna go with that one. And this is really a new sentence, so period, and it's Joseph, so may the Lord, I'm gonna say be, be gracious with you, just as, this is a saw to do, but second person plural, you were, just as you did with your husbands who are dead, um, I'll put your dead and husbands in parentheses and with me, period. And a verse, now we're on to verse nine. Yethen Adonai lachem umtsein, umtseinna. Surprised that final comments isn't tucked under the, oh, it's cause it's not a cough. Umtseinna, minucha, Isha Beth Isha Vatishak Lahen Vatish Vatisena Kolan Vativ Hena. Okay, so this is Nathan. So may the Lord give to you. Interesting. So we have the Jussif plus an imperative. So this is Cal imperfect. No, it's Jussif. Give, allow. Allow could work with accusative and la with infinitive. No, that's not really it. Set place, lay. And it's not Nifal, it's Cal. I am going to go with allow. I think that makes sense give up so may the Lord allow for you um, you know I think this might be we have the conjunction here but because we're dealing with imperative this cannot be a vav consecutive so this is Cal imperative and may the Lord grant for you. So maybe that's provide. She's wishing rest upon them. May the Lord give you rest. I'm going to change allow to give. Along the lines of provide, may the Lord give And I don't even need four. Give you rest and you find rest. So this is matz matzah, like matzah soup. Interesting. Uh, the wrong thing got pulled up here. It's not matzah. This is 
Matza. Interesting. That's the one we want right here. So I use the hit up and down. Article just goes one article entry at a time. The hit though matches what we got here. So hit down. Now we've got it. Reach, find what was sought, obtain, achieve. It's not an if -L, So it's gotta be find. Perfect, imperfect, imperative. Mitsa, Mitsu, Mitsen. Then the infinitive. Mitso, Limso, Lotzachem, Lotzachem. The participle, Motse, Motse. Okay. It's got to be something about give, jussive, and then in the imperative. Let's check the grammars. So this is in Maltke O'Connor. We're looking at uh, the chapter 34, jussive, imperative, cohortative. I want to see if there's anything about jussive plus imperative. 568. Uses of the jussive. Sometimes the jussive qualifies or circumscribes an imperative. So it helps explain the imperative that's what we have here so this jussive is the lord grants it but the command the imperative is go find your rest who helps give rest it's the lord rest from the lord so may the lord grant you may the Lord give that. So instead of and, I'm going to translate that Vav conjunction as that. Give that you find rest. Isha bet Isha. Isha bet Isha. Uh, isha bet Isha. That is. Oh, what is that called? Distributive? Each. So this is... Um, so each woman in the house of her husband. That makes no sense, though. Because... Oh, because they built a house in Moab. And... Teshach Lahen... So, Nasach or Nashach. This is where the speech ends. And she kissed them, or she gave each of them a kiss. And Tisana Kolan, third feminine plural. And they. Raise their voice, weeping aloud. I'm going to say, but. And she kissed them, but they raised their voice and wept aloud. So that concludes verse 9. Okay. Va to marna la. I'm getting my accent wrong. Vato Vato Marna Vato Manala Vato Vato Marnala. And they said to her, because Ethak with you, for with you, this is Shuv. We will return to your people. For with you, we will return to your people. The English adds in no, but it's not in there, no. Verse 10. 
then they said to her comma quotation we will return with you to your people period close quote so the four here key is introducing the quote i'm not going to translate that okay so now we're on to verse 11 but naomi naomi then then naomi said let's just get that down now comma quotation Savna, so this is the imperative of Sov to return, return my daughters to return my daughters to what? I think this is a combination. So Lama, I think is why to what end? Why? Lama, why should I? Why should you go with me? Ha oath li. And we have our interrogative marker or particle. So that doesn't translate longer with me. Why should you go? Why should you go with me any longer? You know what? Uh, it stops. Why should you go with me? Question mark. Then we have a new question. Haod li haoli banim bemea beme. So this is sons in my belly. Two towards purpose, aim, temporal, direction, away from speaking, aim, purpose, advantage, ethic, belonging. This could be it. Possession, this could be it. So oath here once more. Duration, repetition, again, still, remainder, rest. I think this one makes more sense. It's literally um, still more to me, sons in my belly. So I'm going to say... Do I have any more sons in my belly? Question mark. Now we have Haya, Cal perfect consecutive, though. Third common plural. And they will be to you husbands. Ah, uh, so this Vav consecutive that will be husbands to you do I have any more sons in my belly that will be husbands to you question mark she's still speaking verse 12 sovna 
uh, Shovna, Return, Benothai, Lechna. So return my daughters to, no, this is just go for return my daughters, go for Zakan, Zakanti, Zakanti, Mihyoth, Mihyoth. Laish ki amarti yesh li tikva gam hayithi halal no halaila laish stop there for this is uh, Cal Perfect First Common Singular. So I will be old. No, I am old because it's perfect. For I am old. I'm older than to be. To a man. So I am older. She's basically saying I'm an old widow. There's no way I can get a, a man and get a husband. Or. I. Am. Too. Old. To. We'll just say. I am too old to be given in marriage to a man. Key because Amarti. So sometimes key can be beyond just four or so. So here we go. Emphatic. Yea, verily, indeed. On the contrary, ah, this makes more sense. But it has to follow a negative clause, which isn't the case here. Except makes sense. It's an objection in the speaker's own mind. Because if I say there is to me hope also I have the night with a man and also bear sons yeah. So it's probably if. But I think it's more like this a sense of even. Even though. Ki gam. Ki gam. I'm going to combine it though. Uh, for I am too old to be given in marriage to a man. Even if I said yes, there is hope for me. Even if I said there is hope for me, there's hope for me, Gom. Also, on his part, even as well as. There is hope for me also I ha I even if I said there is hope for me uh, what did we say key was combined here with consensus although 
Okay, so I'm gonna use although. Although I were, although I were with a man this night, and although I give birth to sons, and that marks the end of the verse. So that's the end of the verse, but that's not the end of the sentence. It continues. Verse 13. Halahen. So we have our interrog interrogative particle. Lahen. Therefore, Tisha, tisha Berna. Tisha Berna. Ad Asher. Yigdalu, Yigdalu. So that's one phrase. Therefore, imperfect. So this is PL. Shaver or Saver. PL. Hope or wait. Until that. Wait. Until that. This is imp imperfect, and it's a question. So, therefore, will you wait until... I'm not going to translate that just yet. I want to see how it pans out. So, will you wait until that uh, they grow up? Therefore, will you wait until they grow up? Question mark. We have another another one therefore we wait until they grow up therefore te ag this is nifel it looks like it's only looks like it's a hapax legomena only occurring once in here in ruth so in middle hebrew and Jewish Aramaic means to lock up, hinder a woman from entering a new marriage. Okay. So, be hindered. So, therefore, will you lock yourself up for Libilty. Libilty. That's a. Uh, not to be given as a wife. Or not to be given to a man. Not. My daughter's. Kimarli. For it is bitter to me, exceedingly bitter to me, from you for Yitzah to go out, for you to go out with me, Yad Adonai. So, therefore, Will you refrain from marrying? Literally. Will you lock yourself up? Except, uh, there's got to be something going on with the la here. La. 86 times. Levilty. Levilty. That not. So, uh, let's see. 
So let you be for a man. Or we'll say, lest you be given to a man in marriage. Not, or lest you be given to a man in marriage. So it's, therefore, will you refrain from marrying lest you be given to a man in marriage? No, all my daughters for bitter to me exceedingly for it has been it's literally it's for it has been more exceedingly bitter for me than for you so i'm going to change that it has been far more bitter for me than for you because because the hand of the Lord this is Cal perfect come out come forth go forth for the hand of the Lord has I think it's just gone out against me yeah and go forth being to do battle because the hand of the lord has gone out against me period all right um, that's the end of the verse. Now, verse 14. Not only is that the end of the verse, that's definitely the end of the sentence or sentences. Vatisane. To lift, carry. Vatisane. To lift, carry. Carry. So they lifted their voices and wept aloud again. <laughs> then they lifted their voices and wept aloud again. Now that's not the end. Vatisach, Vatishach, and she kissed, and Orpa kissed her mother in law. Let me say then. Then Orpa kissed her mother in law and I'm going to say but because it's showing contrast and then then but okay but Ruth clung Davcha to her, meaning Naomi. Period. End of verse. Um, clung here is the same as in Genesis. To leave and to cleave. Genesis 2.24. Cling to, stick to. Ezekiel, Psalm, Job. Genesis 2.24 right there. To cling, cleave to, stick to. So Ruth basically is uh, sticking sticking by Naomi's side. Now we're at verse 15. Vatomer. And she said, Behold, your... This is the one I wanted. So now Naomi is speaking. Behold, your brothers 
widow. In this case, brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law's widow, which is your sister-in-law, <laughs> returned to her people. So... Shava Yevim Tech El Ama Vel Eloheha Shuvi Ahare Yevim Tech. So, and she said, Behold, your sister in law. returned to her people and to her gods. That's because in ancient times, the woman was expected in marriage to subsume all of the gods that her husband worshipped. That was the common practice. We see the same thing with uh, Jacob and Leah, and Jacob, and Rachel. But now she's returning to her people and returning to her gods. And returning to her gods. So now she says, period, return after your brother's wife. Return after your brother's widow. End of verse. Now we're on to verse 16. But Ta'omer, Ruth said, I'm going to say, but, but Ruth said, comma, quotation mark. No, I'll tiff ge v tiff ge v So this is Joseph. So... Mm. Faga. So it's pleading, and but it's cow. So this is Joseph because Ruth is talking to her mother-in-law. So her mother-in-law would be in the superior position. So this is a softened request. Okay. I'm gonna say please just to bear that across although not is not here please do not plead with me azvech azvech to leave you or to forsake you in order to return so la shuv in order to return from after you to leave you in order to return from I'm gonna include following from following after you key El Asher Telchi so for to what? So to what? I think that's where. So we have as a relative particle marks connection between two independent clauses. That's not really what we're seeing here. Used as a conjunction, that's also not what we're seeing here. It's not a so that. Would insertion. Close association, when, etc. So this is not all. This is L. It's 
not L, 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 <laughs> L, 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 there we go. Towards, in, into, in consideration of, in addition to, towards, for, where, for, I will go where you go. For where you go, I will go. And Uva Uva Asher Talini Alin. And in where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people, Amech, Ami. Your people, my people. Your people will be my people. There's no verb, so we got to add it. Veloheka, Elohe. Your gods will be my gods. Is that plural? Yes. Your gods, plural, will be my gods. Now, the problem with that is Elohim, which is the general term for God, is itself plural. So in this case, even though it's plural, we're going to translate it singular in reference to God. So your God will be my God. So that's verse 16. Verse 17. Ba'asher, Tamuthi, Amuth, Visham, Ekaver. So this would be where. So where you die, I will die. So whether it's living or dying, she's sticking with her. She's truly clinging to her. This is the appropriate response of the wife to cling to her husband. Now in her husband's absence, she's clinging to her husband's parents. And Vasham Ekver Ekaver Ko Yaase Adonai Li Viko Yosif Ki Hamveth uh, Yafrid Bene Uve Uven Venek. Okay, so where you die, I will die, and there uh, I will be buried. And there I will be buried. There I will be buried for, okay, so thus, thus the Lord, okay, this is a, a curse, imperfect. So yeah, this is just of, thus the Lord do to me and Thus, Yasaf, Pithil. So it's an oath, not a curse, an oath. May God do to me this and that. So may the Lord, thus, the Lord do to me and thus. So right here. So may the Lord do to me this and that. Hamath for death 
this death, I think if this death separate between and between you following a negative clause only Ruth 117 so it's not really on the contrary so, thus the Lord do to me and this and that if this death Use this preposition with singular. Bain tov e vain re. Between me and you. Yeah, it's between two parties. May if death separates me and you. Wait, where did I get separates from? This is Hifil. So separate and more as well. On the contrary, if death. No, that doesn't make sense. Conditional. If in case. Verse 17. Between me and you. Okay. So end it there. Verse 18. Va tere when she saw that and she saw that she was persistent in going with her he la lecheth itha ita va tech dal va tech dal she stopped speaking to her <laughs> gave her the silent treatment then she stopped Speaking to her. Verse 19. Va talach na. So then they went, the two of them, until they came to Bethlehem. Then they went, the two of them, until they came to Bethlehem. Vahi kivo ana. And it was as to come when they came to Bethlehem, when they came to Bethlehem, Vateham, Vatehom, Kal Ha'ir Alehen. All the town made a noise. <laughs> they went wild. <laughs> went wild. In fact, we're just gonna. All the town went wild. The place was astir. Oh, it's Niffil. Yeah, it went wild. Went wild. All the town went wild over them. Hazoth, Naomi. And they said. Ah, is this Naomi? And they asked, Is this Naomi? And a verse, verse 20. Then she said to them, comma, quotation mark, 
Al tik rena li Naomi. Do not call me Naomi. Kerena li Mara. So call me Mara. For Hamar Shadai Shadai Li Maoth for Almighty this is Hifil has caused great bitterness on me for the Almighty has caused great bitterness on me. That's verse 20. Verse 21. Ani Malaya Halakti Verecham Heshivani Adonai Lama Tik Tikrena Li Naomi Va Adonai Ana V Vishadai Hera Li. So I Uh, Malaya full I went full so she's still speaking I went full and empty I returned I went full But I returned empty. The Lord, why? Well, this is to why or to what? The Lord, ah, so this is third masculine singular, but the Lord... The Lord returned me empty. Hithil perfect, third masculine singular. And then we have our first common singular pronominal suffix. That makes sense. So the Lord returned me empty. Why? Call me Naomi. We're going to have to translate this as when, when the Lord answered in me and Shaddai did evil to me. When the Lord answered me and Almighty did evil. Question mark. Close. It's interesting because you don't typically talk about the Lord in this way. And why would you return to Judah when you feel this bitterness towards the Lord. It seems like she feels bitter towards God. Why would you return to Judah at all then? Cal perfect reply answer. Okay. And then what is this? Ra'ah. 
Hit fill? Yeah. Do evil, treat badly. That's how I'm gonna do it. Treated me badly. Okay, so now verse 22 and we're done. Vatashav, Naomi, Veruth, Hamo Avia, Kalta, Kalav Kalatha, Ima, Hashava, Mishde, uh, Miste, Moav, Vehema, Ba'u, Beth Lechem. Uh, Bithilatha, Bith, Bithil, Bithilath, Kitsir, uh, Seorim. So, and Naomi and Ruth returned. Well, let's we'll see. That's third feminine singular. And Naomi returned, and Ruth Hamo Avia, and Ruth the Moabite, uh, her daughter in law, with her, uh, returned with her. It's like the, the one, her daughter in law. Who returned with her from the field? Said they fields of Moab, and they came. To Bethlehem, Bithilath, at the beginning of what is barley? Hairy, grainy kernel fruit. At the beginning of barley harvest. Okay. So that's our translation. Let's give it a quick read. So this is Ruth chapter one. And it was in the days of the judges who were judging. And there was a famine in the land. And a man from Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the fields of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the man's name was Elimelech. And his wife's name was Naomi. And his two sons' names were Machlon and Kilchion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. And they went to the fields of Moab, and they remained there. And Elimelech died, husband of Naomi, and she remained, as did her two sons. And they took for themselves Moabite wives. The name of the first was Orpah, and the name of the second was Ruth. And they dwelled there for ten years. And also the two sons died, Machlon and Kilion. And the woman remained without her two boys and husband. And she arose in her daughters-in-law, and she returned from the fields of Moab, because she heard among the land of Moab that the Lord inspected his people in order to give to them bread. And she went out from that place which she was where she was living which is where she was living two daughters-in-law with her two with her two daughters-in-law then they walked on the way to return to the land of judah and naomi said to her two daughters-in-law go return each one to her mother's house may the lord be gracious with you just as you did with your dead husbands and with me May the Lord give 
that you find rest, each woman in the house of her husband. And she kissed them. But they raised their voice and wept aloud. And they said to her, We will return with you to your people. Then Naomi said, Why should you go with me? Do I have any more sons in my belly that will be husbands to you? Return, my daughters, go! For I am too old to be given in marriage to a man. Even if I said there is hope for me, Although I were with a man this night, and although I give birth to sons, therefore will you wait until they grow up? Therefore will you refrain from marrying, lest you be given to a man in marriage? No, my daughters, for it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted their voices and wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Then she said, Behold, your brother's widow returned to her people and to her gods. Return after your brother's widow. But Ruth said, Please do not plead with me to leave you in order to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. Thus the Lord do to me, and this and that, if death separates me and you. And she saw she was persistent in going with her. Then she stopped speaking to her. Then they went, the two of them, until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, all the town went wild over them. And they asked, Is this Naomi? Then she said to them, Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has caused great bitterness on me. I went full. But the Lord returned me empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord answered me and Almighty treated me badly? And Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who returned with her from the fields of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. All right, so that's Ruth chapter 1. Next week, we will cover Ruth chapter 2. And we're going to focus on verbs, specifically cow, cow stem. We'll see you then.